Hospital management is a little different than management over here. You would still maybe have a SWAT, you still maybe have strategic, you might still have that under hospital management, but there are six things under hospital management that makes it a little bit different. If you major in hospital management or get a master's in hospital management, you have a job the day you finish school. A good job. Um, the problem is you have to have Professor Parks five times. But other than that, it's a good major. All right. Hospitals are one of three kinds. Private, government, or charity, nonprofit. The private hospitals traditionally have been money makers for companies that ran them. Sometimes they were very big, sometimes they were very small, uh, sometimes they were owned by doctors. There's a famous hospital in Augusta, Georgia called Doctors Hospital, which is the burn, the burn center for the country. Uh, if you are burned in, a, in an accident, um, plane crash or car crash, they fly you to Augusta, Georgia to Doctors Hospital for your treatment. But, but private hospitals have run into the problem You've got three hospitals. They ran into the problem of money. They weren't making enough money. And if they don't make enough money, then maybe they can't offer OBGYN, or maybe they can't offer a, a, a cancer ward, or maybe they can't offer an ER. And so they had to start trying to cut back. One of the things that they did It's called consolidation of assets, which basically means buy in bulk. If you buy in bulk, each individual item is less. So if Hospital One had to buy 10,000 COVID masks, all of a sudden, it wouldn't be something that would be in the budget, all of a sudden they had to buy COVID masks, and each of these three private hospitals had to buy COVID mask all of a sudden, and they didn't have it in the budget, it cost them a lot of money. And so what you do is instead of buying 10,000, 10,000, and 10,000, you buy 100,000. And these might be a dollar a piece. These might be 50 cents a piece or a quarter a piece. So you buy in bulk and then share your assets with other hospitals to do it. Now, <clears throat> other companies, other manufacturers can do this, but almost never do, all right? Almost never do. Uh, you don't find Walmart and Kmart buying, you know, a extra balloons so that they can put in a toy section. You don't find BMW and Mercedes buying tires in bulk so that they can put them on their cars. But in hospital management, that is a common occurrence. They buy in bulk because they have so many little rinky dinky things. If when you go to when do you have in your, your surgery? Then when do you have in your surgery? My surgery? Yeah, don't you have to have surgery? No. Okay, I'm sorry. Who had surgery? When are you having your surgery? I already had it. You already had it. All right. Where'd you go to have it? Uh, I can't see. Columbia. Overnight or outpatient? Outpatient. Okay. If you go in overnight for surgery, this is what happens. They have uh, a, a paper towel 
five dollars. They have a syringe, five dollars. They put a uh, IV in your arm, five dollars. Uh, they have a pen that they write on the clipboard, five dollars. They have a diaper, five dollars. They have a tray for your food, five dollars. Everything they touch is checked off by an assistant in, in the operating room. And every item is charged. Used to, you'd go to the operating room and it would be $100 for everything in the room. But now every item is priced. And every item that is used, if it's forceps or whatever, every item that is used is priced. And the reason is so that they can price it out and buy a bunch of them. Okay, if they have to buy a bunch of forceps for the OBGYN, they're going to buy as many as they can to get the cheapest price they can. And the only way they know that is by knowing exactly how many times it's touched, how many times it's used. So the first thing, I'm going to label these for you. First thing about hospital management is this right here, consolidation. The second thing about hospital management is even with the consolidation, private hospitals started going broke and doctors started leaving and doctors would leave Newberry County Hospital to go work at Charleston or to go work at Lexington. And so what happened was all of the hospitals cons consolidated into bigger hospitals. Anybody here from Columbia? Okay. Prisma. If ever you go to a hospital in Columbia, you're going to a Prisma hospital. It used to be Providence. It used to be Lexington Memorial. It used to be Baptist Hospital. It used to be Richland Memorial Hospital. And now all four hospitals are under one <coughs> management prisma. And it's a huge medical complex. In Charleston, the Medical University of South Carolina owns four hospitals. In Greenville, a Catholic group called Bon Secours owns three hospitals. And so it's not that's bad, it doesn't mean it's good, it doesn't mean it's bad, it just means that the smaller hospitals went in under one management group. Not only to buy in bulk, but it made it easier to manage. So the second thing that happened was consolidation. Our government hospital. You just in, in your lifetime, mm -hmm. forty two counties in South Carolina. In your lifetime, there were forty two county hospitals. And some of them in small counties were very small, not as big as this building. And there would be one or two doctors, there would be one OBGYN, there would be one ER doctor, one ambulance, and that served for a hundred years. They were staying in business, did not make money. They no no they weren't making any money because it's not big enough, not enough patients but they stayed in business because the, the county council gave them money. So if you went to a county council meeting, they would say, we're going to give 100000 to pave this road, and we're going to give 100000 to build this baseball field, and we're going to give 100000 to the hospital. And it was just a part of county government. What do you think's happened to those hospitals? They've, they've gone something else. Lexington County Hospital, the county council said Lexington County is growing like crazy. We can't keep up with it. So Lexington County 
became part of prison, became part of the Columbia system. So county hospitals slowly but surely are changing. Now, Newberry, Hospital, Newberry County is a good hospital. They have particularly well known for knee replacements, uh, and they have OBGYN. They got uh, ambulance and ER. They're a full, full staffed hospital, but it's small. Lawrence County, there's no way they're going to stay in business. The Lawrence, anybody from Clinton? The Lawrence County Hospital just isn't going to make it. It just isn't going to, probably isn't going to make it because it's very small. Okay, so the third thing I want you to know is that government hospitals are paid by the government uh, but they are in trouble. Now, charity nonprofit. This is really easy. You see this word nonprofit? Yes, there is no such thing as a nonprofit. I don't care if it's Red Cross. I don't care if it's the blood mobile. I don't care if it's the cancer society. I don't care if it's your school elementary selling cookies. There is no such thing as a nonprofit. What it is is the profits are simply put back into the business. If they don't make a profit selling cookies, they can't sell cookies next year. They take the profit from the cookies and they buy more cookies. That doesn't make it nonprofit. It just makes it they're doing something else with it. Well, you can go from a nonprofit hospital or you can go all the way up to the uh, Children's Hospital in Memphis. Or you can go to the Children's Hospital in Iowa. Ever seen an Iowa football game when the stands turn around and wave to the kids because the hospital is right next to the football field? They're not a nonprofit. They just take the profits and put it back into the hospital instead of giving it to stockholders or instead of giving raises to CEOs or giving raises to board of trustees. It's just a different way of accounting for the money. Any business, you could take Jeff Bezos, you could take Amazon, and you could change the accounting and you could tell the government we're nonprofit. Okay, we changed our accounting. We're nonprofit. That doesn't mean Amazon's not making money. It just means it's not going to Jeff Bezos and the stockholders. So, that's the fourth thing I want you to know about. Now, the fifth thing is the most important. Third-party pay. Does anybody know what that means? Uh, what? and the patient. Third party means somebody else, somebody not involved in the transaction, somebody that's not seeing the doctor, and that's the insurance company. And uh, there are a couple of industries that have third party pay, but not even enough to mention. The, the medical hospital management, right here, hospital management, depends on third-party pay, period. If we didn't have third-party pay, we would not have hospitals, we would not have doctors. Now anybody, I don't have any Canadians in here, I think some of the other classes. 
Huh? Where? Oh, you. You're right. You're, I knew that. Um, Canada and the UK have some government health insurance. Canada's in total, is it? Is it? Okay. Uh, Canada and UK got government insurance. You go to the hospital, you go to the doctor, you know, you tell them you got your teeth knocked out, playing lacrosse, and you go there and the government pays for your health care. But the taxes are higher in order to pay for that. In the United States, we had third party paid by insurance companies. Now we, if you are 65, you have Medicare. Medicare is government insurance exactly like Canada. Medicare is exactly like Canada. I'm 67. When I turn 65, when I go to the doctor, it's paid for. I show them my Medicare card. Uh, and in fact, this this may explain how important that is. Um, when I started teaching here, I had just turned 62, so I had a three-year gap before I got Medicare. But I was only teaching one or two courses, and you have to teach four courses to be full time and get benefits. So I went to Dr. Sharon and said, uh, the most that I can make at age 62 and get Social Security is $17,000 a year. And I said, I will work for $17,000 a year if you give me full benefits at age 62. And Dr. Sharon says, that's a good deal. That's a win-win deal. So for two and a half years, I talked for $17,000, but I had free insurance, just like Medicare. And then when I turned 65, what did I do? Well, no, I would have got a raise. <laughs> yeah. As soon as I turned 65, I said, okay, the $17,000 is off. All right, because now I got the Medicare. All right, and so that's an important important time in, in America. Insurance can come from the government, like Medicare. Insurance can come from private. And, you know, there, there may, may be 2,000 insurance companies in America. The final thing I want to tell you is how does the insurance company, how does this private insurance company right here how do they know how much to charge in a premium? How much do they know to get from their shareholders in order to have enough money to pay the hospital and the doctor? Taxes. No. Oh, okay. These are private insurance companies. Oh, the answer to everything, Bobby, is not taxes. <laughs> All right. How, do, how does the insurance company know how much to charge you? Yeah. They got uh, a system. What's it called, you know? Uh-uh. Okay, that's what I'm going to tell you. That's a good answer. <laughs> Actuary. Actuary. If you are a math major, if you're a math major, you can go to work for an insurance company the day you graduate from college at a couple hundred thousand dollars a year if you want to be an actuary. And an actuary sits in a cubicle all day long for 30 years and they'll say, okay, if I've got a 25-year-old black male, uh, how long and how much is it going to cost if he gets uh, cancer at age 52. And they'll tell you. And they'll say, okay, we need to charge him $100 a month because at age 52, we've got to have enough money for if he gets cancer. Okay, that's what actuarial is. So, if he's 
doing females and their childbearing age is going to be higher. What's the chance of somebody getting sick or a child getting sick? All right. They put plug it in and the premiums are X amount of dollars so that when they go to the hospital or go be OBGYN, the insurance company can pay the bill and still make money. All right. They're not tra trying to figure it out exactly. They're trying to figure it out how much can we pay and still make money. Because they want to charge the premium. Let's say they want to charge you $400 a month for your health insurance. All right, so for $400 a month, 12 months a year, what's that, $3,600? $3,600 for 30 years. All right, uh, nine million, nine hundred thousand, nine hundred thousand, and then you get cut, you get cancer at age sixty. Have they got enough money to pay all of your cancer bills and still have money left over? And they can tell you that down to an amazing figure. Okay. How long people die? How long it takes people to get sick? How much it's going to cost? and so forth, okay? Uh, I, I could never be an actuary in a million years, but I've got a nephew in Atlanta that's an actuary, and he actually, he loves it. He sits in a cubicle, nine to five, does his figures, five o'clock, goes to the break game. You know, I mean, there's no, there's no worries outside of work, because you're just you're dealing with figures. You're not, you're not dealing with people, you know, you, Deal with the figures and turn your figure into your boss, and then you're done. And there's a lot to be said for that kind of job. All right, so I give you a practice test. And the practice test, or the final exam, says somebody is in a wreck and somebody was driving 100 miles an hour and caused a wreck and the person broke both legs. So what's the first issue? What's the first issue? Come on, torts. Torts. You've got a duty not to drive 100 miles an hour. Okay, if you break that duty, if that duty's breached and you have a foreseeable injury, then it's torts. And the person, if you've got torts, then you've got civil litigation. You sue the person that hits you. And you've got damages, which we did yesterday. And now you're going to the hospital. You've got hospital management. And the only thing that you would need to tell me is that the, uh, the person hurt would go to either a private government or nonprofit hospital and would have third party pay. All right, that's all I'm looking for you to tell me. Okay, I'm not looking for, for any long explanation like I just gave you. But just know that if you are hurt, say in a tort, uh, and you get damages and you go to a hospital, that hospital is going to be one of three kinds, and it's going to be third-party pay. Everybody understand that? Now, in real life, in, in real life, hospital management is also going to have SWAT and strategic because there's still a managerial issue. But I'm not making you connect those. Okay, it's either a management issue or a hospital management issue. I, I'm not going to make you connect the two. Yeah? If the first one's consolidation, what's the second one? First one consolidation, that is consolidation too. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you've got, you've got, this is consolidation, okay? This, this is more merger. That's probably a better word than consolidation. Mm -hmm. Consolidation is buying in bulk and so spreading out the cost. Uh -huh. And then a merger is actually when you make one hospital out of three. Thank you, that was a good question.